Okay, so we are going to do some review here on reducing fractions. Some of you have asked me outright, and some of you have just been having some troubles, and I just thought that this would be a very short and easy review for all of us. So here we go. I want to remind you that a reduced fraction is one where the numerator, which is the, the number on top, the numerator is always the number on top. This one is the numerator. And <clears throat> the denominator is downstairs. I like to remember that because the denominator starts with D being downstairs. I think I actually said that before I explained it, but um, the denominator is downstairs. So um, the way that we know that a fraction is reduced is if both the top and the bottom number do not share, it is reduced, if they do not share any common factors. And I know <clears throat> that this was very messy. I was at a bit of an angle. <laughs> I was at a bit of an angle when I started to write before. So let me rewrite reduced so it's easier for you to read. Because now I'm not at that weird angle. Reduced. There you go. So a fraction is reduced if they, meaning the numerator and the denominator, do not share any common factors. So I know that a lot of you get mixed up with factors and multiples, but factors are the numbers that are multiplied together to get to a number. And those of you that are with me know that I teach you these very secret, super secret words. I'm, I can't believe I'm going to re reveal this in a video. It's going to be recorded. Shh, don't tell anybody. But I call these the gazintas. Gazintas. Gazinta. Now, I know there's a bunch of you out there, a whole bunch of you, about these gazintas. What we're really saying is goes into, goes into. So are there any numbers that go into one and three? No, the answer is no. Well, one goes into one and goes into three, but that doesn't help us because one and three would stay the same. I call them gazintas. We'll go on with that. So a couple of other examples, just to be clear, two fifths. That is already reduced because there is not a number that goes into two and into five. They do not share a gazinta, so that is reduced. Mixed numbers should also be reduced. So a mixed number would be, remember, a whole number with a fraction sitting next to it, just like that. So one and four ninths. Four ninths is what we're looking at to see if that's reduced. Four and nine do not share a gazinta or do not have a number that gazinta, four and nine, do not share a common factor. So it is, it is reduced. So also reduced. <clears throat> so hopefully that is clear and we can start talking about how to 
reduce those numbers. So here we are. Let's start with some easy numbers. So if we look at 2 fourths. Now, even numbers, if we have an even number on top and bottom, the numerator and the denominator are both even, we are guaranteed a gazinta that they share. They are even numbers. What's the gazinta they share? Remember, even numbers mean that they have e pairs. Everybody can pair up with nobody left over. So that means the gazinta they share is two. Two can go into top and bottom. So we think about it by saying, okay, what's two divided by two? This is what we're thinking in our heads. Or you can write it down in the beginning, it's probably wise, and four divided by two. Well, that top number, two divided by two, becomes one. And then four divided by two becomes two. Now, more than likely, you already knew that two-fourths was equal to one-half. And I've talked about before, we use very simple numbers in the beginning to make sure that we understand the concept, because the numbers are not always going to be this simple. Well, most of the numbers that I'm going to deal with in this video are going to be, because we don't want to make it long and complicated as we go through this. There's no reason for that. We just want to understand the concept so we can apply it later. And you can always ask me more questions in class. Okay, let's look at a couple more examples. So let's look at 9 and 12. <clears throat> 9 and 12. Well, the first thing we kind of always look at, does 9 go into 12? No, it does not. So is there a gazinta they share? So if I look at these, and hopefully, if look, here's the deal. If you're not really strong in your multiplication tables, that's okay. Nobody's judging you. Just practice them. Nobody will know. Just go home, take a couple of minutes. There's plenty of things online, or you can just practice them yourselves. You can, you can do it when you're doing something else, probably. But enough of that. What's the gazinta they share? Well, you can do it methodically and say, does two go into both of them? No, it doesn't. Does three go into both of them? Ha ha, three does go into both of them. So I'm going to say what's nine divided by three? And what's 12 divided by three? Well, nine divided by three is three. And 12 divided by three is four. So there I am, there's my reduced nine twelfths is equal to three fourths. Let's try another one. I can have, let's try a mixed number. Let's say two and 20 40 fifths. Oh no, what am I gonna do here? <clears throat> well, I'm gonna tell you, you're gonna ignore that mixed, the, the whole number for right now. We don't need to worry about it. Let's just look at the 20 and the 45. And pretty much you need to say to yourself, 20 and 45. What, what's the gazinta they share? What well, gazinta 20 and gazinta 45? Gazinta. Special secret math word. Don't go telling everybody. Shh. Okay. So hopefully you know that if numbers end in 0 and 5, that that wonderful number 5 goes into both of them. Divided by 5, both of them. Divided by 5. So the whole number stays the same. We haven't touched that. We're not going to touch that. So 20 divided by 5 is 4. And 45 divided by 5 is 9. There we go. Next. Okay. So I'm sure you noticed that all the numbers we've dealt with or the fractions we've dealt with so far don't have um, or haven't had the numerator larger than the denominator. So let's look at some of those. I'm going to actually write a few of them down here. So if I have 15 over 3, 18 over 9, and 3 and 4 over 2. Okay, let's start with 15 thirds. What's the gazinta they share? What well, goes into five, 15 and goes into 3? 
And I know you just heard what I said. Well, if you're paying attention really close, um, you might have heard me start to say five. And a lot of people do that. But does five go into 15 and go into three? Can we do three divided by five? No. But the reason you start, you heard me start to say five is a common error because what is my answer going to be? I hear you talking to me. You're screaming, five, five, the answer is five. Well, let's make sure. What is the actual gazinta they share? Well, it is three, right? 15 divided by three and three divided by three. 15 divided by three is five. Three divided by three is one. And now that one is going, oh, help me, help me. Oh my gosh, I'm getting squished. So help me, I can't hold up that big giant five. So then we say, I'll help you one. And of course, if it's just ones, it's easy. Five ones is of course five. And I end up with a beautiful, wonderful whole number. You may have even seen this coming when I wrote those down as we go across. 18 ninths. Now, if you remember, when we got to seventh grade, I did talk about fraction bars are the same as what? I can hear you. You're saying, Mrs. De Silva, Mrs. De Silva, I know the answer. It's division. Yes, it is. It is the same thing. So you can also think about this as reducing as the same as division. Okay, so that's another reason I put these here. So you could see when I reduce, as I did, as I did on this side, 15 divided by 3 and 3 divided by 3, I ended up with 5 over 1 or 5. <coughs> or if I just simply over here say 8 ninths or 18, 8, sorry guys, 18 ninths or 18 divided by 9, well, that's 2. Or if I had looked at it, you know, as a... Reducing that fraction, 18 divided, 9 is the gazinta they share. 18 divided by 9 and 9 divided by 9, I would have ended up over here with 2 over 1, which equals 2. Same thing. So it's nice to see them in both um, forms. And you should, of course, end up with the same answer. Now let's look at this silly one over here. I've got my mixed number. I've got a whole number with a fraction. So three, my whole number, I'm gonna bring that straight down. For now, I'm not doing anything with it, but now I've got four halves, four divided by two. What is that gonna become? I'm sure you're already seeing it. That becomes four divided by two or four halves is two, a whole number. This is not 32, I hope you're not thinking that. I have to add those two whole numbers together so my answer is actually five. Okay, moving right, I'm gonna come right back over here. We had 15 divided by three. Along to some less obvious answers. Uh, let's take a look at 16 thirds. Oh, goodness gracious. So, now we need to start thinking about 16 and 3 do not share a gazinta. However, that 3 is getting squished. Oh, help me, Mrs. De Silva, help me, help me. That 3 cannot hold up that ginormous 16. What are we going to do? Well, we're going to say, how many times does that 3 go into 16? Again, we're thinking, now we're really thinking about this as a division. as a division bar. So three goes into 16, how many times? Well, hopefully you know, because in the previous page, we had 15 divided by three was five. It's very close to that 16 divided by three, right? So 16 divided by three, we know it's gonna go into that five times, right? Five whole times, but then we know that that's only going to actually give us 15. Now, way back in elementary school, you had these 
silly little things called reminders, which if Mrs. De Silva was in charge of the world, you'd never have learned. But it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Three times five is 15. That means if we take that 16, what do we have left over? We have that remainder, but really we don't have a remainder of one whole. We actually have a fraction left over because it's actually out of three or thirds. So we have one left over, but it's actually one third that's left over, not one whole. So my answer becomes five and one third. So this is a reason in Mrs. De Silva's world why fractions are scary, quote unquote, to people. But as you know, fractions are our friends. And that is, of course, why Mrs. De Silva says it all, all the time. Fractions are our friends. And they really are the easier thing to do all the time. Because <clears throat> that one that was left over here, that extra or leftover one has to match up with my three. So it's five and one third. So let's look at another one. Let's say we have 25, 25 ninths. Okay. <clears throat> How many times does 9 go into 25? I notice a pattern here because I am giving you fractions that are very familiar to fractions that we did on the last page. So you can look right back in your notebook. In your notebook I always tell you that. So I would take notes so we can reference them. 9 goes into 25. How many even times? So 9 goes into it to 25. So I think about this. It's division, right? 9 goes into 25 two times, right? Because if it went into it three times, I can't do 9 times 3 is actually 27. That's too many, right? So 9 goes into... 25 two times. So that's my whole number. Now I know there's going to be some leftovers, but remember they're going to be in fractions of ninths. So I'm just going to bring that part, part of the fraction right down because the bottom part is going to have to be ninths. So now I've got leftovers, but oh my goodness, Mrs. De Silva, I can't do this in my head. Right, Mrs. De Silva. Some of you start whining at me. Stop that. Seventh graders don't whine. But what they do is use their calculators, okay? It's okay. Use a calculator. Don't use your calculator for the fractions. Please don't do that. You need to understand this conceptually, okay? So we know that 2 times 9, so if I go over here and do 2 times 9, I know you all know that that's 18. We knew it on the last page. You know it on this page. And I bring my 25 over here, and I say, okay, what is 25 minus 18? You still should write it out, even if you're using your calculator, because then you remember, or you don't have to remember what you did. You just look back in your notes. So 25 minus 18, if you didn't already figure it out on paper, it is 7. And where is that 7 going to go? Because it is left over from up here. That's your remainder. Ugh. This is De Silva doesn't like that. Yucky. Okay, the seven, because it's actually seven ninths, they're fractions. So the answer is two and seven ninths. Isn't it beautiful? <gasps> it's a thing of beauty. Fractions are our friends. Okay, we're going to do one more. So now I'm going to have three and 11 halves. Okay, so now I've got a mixed number that I'm starting with. So I'm going to use the same process. I'm going to bring the three down, that whole number, and I'm going to kind of park it over here because there's nothing I can do with it right now. And I'm going to just look at, so I put it over there. 
I'm going to park it over there. I'm not going to worry about it right now. I'm going to look at the 11, 11 halves. How many times does 2 go into 11? This is easy. You bet. I really hope you know your twos tables. I know you do. I'm, see, I'm, I'm silly. And I know you do. So 2 goes into 11. How many times? Now, I'm going to work on this over here separately. Okay? Can't forget about this. We know that afterwards, we're actually going to add these together. I'm going to put the plus sign right here for now. 2 goes into 11 five times. I've got another whole number. You need to remember that. Then what's left? Well, I'm not going to worry about leftovers yet because I'm going to put the bottom part of my fraction because it's going to be in halves. And really, it should be clear, fairly obvious what's left over. My leftover in this case... is going to be a 1. So it's 5 and 1 half. But I'm not done. This is different because I have a whole number that I put to the side. So I need to add them together. These are whole numbers. 3 plus 5, that gives me 8 and 1 half as my final answer. So I dealt with the two parts separately. Well, really, I didn't do anything to the whole number, nothing to do to it. Dealt with the fraction, but then I had to put them all back together at the end. So there you go. That's your review on reducing fractions. Hope that helped. If not, always feel free to contact me. Let me know. And, or if there's just a specific little thing, let me know, and we will clear that up. Have fun. Fractions are our friends.